now that we know how to find the area of polygons, we're going to talk about finding volume and sometimes surface area of solids. And the first solids that we're going to look at are prisms and cylinders. A right prism is a prism where each lateral edge is perpendicular to both bases. So let's look at our little diagram here. And I've highlighted what I'm going to call the bases in this. That would be my top and my bottom. There are two congruent polygons that are on different planes. And in the prism, all of the side edges are called lateral sides and they are perpendicular to the bases in a right prism. So the bases are two congruent parallel polygons, not sides. An oblique prism is a prism where the lateral edges, that's the side edges, are not perpendicular to the bases. So it's kind of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa where the bases are still parallel, but the sides are not perpendicular. Regardless if it is an oblique or a right prism, you use the same formula to find the volume. And the volume is just the measure of the space that the figure occupies. And it's always measured in cubic units, whereas area is in square units. So the volume of a prism is V equals capital B times H, where the capital B is the area of the base and H is the height of the prism. And this can be different. So when the base is a rectangle, you're going to use length times width. And I just realized that I didn't spell rectangle right there, so let me change that. Okay, now if your base was a triangle, you would use one-half base times height for your capital B. And it would, if you had a regular polygon, you would use the uh, formulas that we learned how to find the area of regular polygons for your base. So it all depends on what your base is. In this particular one, we're going to find the volume of a rectangular prism. So our capital B is going to be one half base times height. And the volume for a prism is the area of the base times the height. So we're going to replace our capital B with one half base times height. And then we have the height of our prism. Now looking at this prism and this formula, you notice that you have two H's. Well, the second H is the height of the prism, which is 5. And the first H is the height of the triangle. So don't get confused by that. So we're going to say 1 half times the base, which is 3, times 1 and a half, which is the height of the triangle. And then we're going to multiply it by 5, which is the height of the prism. Put that all in our calculator, and we're going to get uh, 11 and 1 fourth, or 11.25 centimeters cubed. So be careful with the cubed. And read carefully how they want you to answer it in Math Excel, whether as a fraction or a decimal. Now, the next solid that we're going to look at is cylinders. A cylinder is a solid with a congruent circular basis. So the bases are circles, and of course, they lie in parallel planes. Sorry about that. Someone turned on the TV. Okay, the height of the cylinder is the distance between the bases. The radius of the cylinder is the radius of the circle, that is the base. And when you have a right cylinder, a segment joined in the center of the bases is perpendicular to both bases. So what we have here as our example is a right cylinder. What we have here is a right cylinder, and what we have here is called an oblique cylinder. So again, it's kind of leaning a little bit. So to find the volume of a cylinder, we're going to use the same idea. We're going to take 
the volume of, or the area of the base, which in this case is the area of a circle, and we're going to multiply it times the height of the cylinder. So let's try this one. This is a right cylinder, and we're going to write down our formula. Pi r squared times the height. R, r is our radius of 2.5. Our height is 7. We're going to plug those numbers in, and we can answer volume when we're doing cylinders in one of two ways. We can answer in terms of pi, or we can answer as a whole number. So if I answer in terms of pi, I'm just going to take the number part of my formula, and I'm going to plug it in my calculator, and I'm going to say the volume equals 43.75 pi meters squared. So that is answering in terms of pi. I don't actually plug the pi into my calculator. I just leave it as almost like a variable. Now, if Math Excel wants it as a number, then you would take 4.75 times pi, and you would get a number that you then need to round. And when we round this to hundredths, we get that the volume of this right cylinder is 137.44 inches cubed. And again, volume is in cubed, cubic units. Okay, now you can also use these formulas to find missing dimensions. So in this particular rectangular prism, we know the, well let's just call the first or the front side our base because I know the length and the width of this. The length is uh, 18 and the width is 3.5 but what I don't know is the height of this prism so the height between the two bases now I know that for a prism the volume equals the area of the base times the height and since it's a rectangular prism I'm gonna say that the area of the base is length times width and I'm gonna plug in my numbers my length is 18 my width is three and a half, but I don't know my height. I do, however, know my volume. So I'm going to replace my V with 661 and a half. And then I'm going to solve this equation for H. And when I do, I get that the height of this prism is 10 and a half centimeters. Sometimes we're going to have what are called composition solids or composite solids and that is a three-dimensional figure that's really made up of two or more simpler three-dimensional figures. So in looking at this um, you can see that it's really two rectangles one set on its side and one laid down. So my first rectangular prism I'm going to call the front the base so my length is 4 plus the little segment on the end, which is 3. So the length of that guy is 7. The width is 3, and the height is 11. That's my first prism. Then my second prism is this little one that's set laying up front. So you have to kind of mark it up so you can see it. My length on this one is 6. My width is 3 and again my height will be 11. Now in a comp composition or a composite solid what you do is you find the volume of both simpler figures and you add them together. So the volume of my first prism is length times width times height and I'm going to add that to the volume of my second prism which is 6 times 3 times 11. And when I do the math I get the volume of this composite figure is 429 centimeters cubed. All right, so all you're doing is applying formulas. I think that you're ready for your homework.